Right, okay. So tell me, tell me again, you were starting to give me a message about how things are. Um, but, I think if people have been following the news from the new governor who is um, very much in touch with the media and is very much a politician and keen to get the community involved or let them know, that, remind them that there is a prison and that uh, the prison is part of the community and that the prisoners are part of the community and that the, the message of the prison is that we take the prisoners and we turn their lives around and we send them back into the community as valued members of the community. Uh, I don't know how that compares with... Well, there was a couple of conflicting reports that came out from the prison the other day. There was one a report saying that uh, there was inadequate training facilities or, you know, preparing for people to be released. And then somebody, I thought it was the prison governor, which rather strangely said everything was wonderful. That's what I thought she was saying. What's the message you're getting? Are they saying that the facilities are adequate or, or not adequate? Um, well, I would say, I mean, for, for myself personally, who takes part in all the activities that are going there is plenty going on in fact I don't really have any spare time well, although I'm in, in a prison cell uh, m m much of my time is taken up I mean other prisoners don't do anything other than lie in their cells which gets right. of, the opportunities are there if you choose to make the most of them um, we have recently lost the head of education so all courses and things are on hold yeah I think that's possibly what the in August I think that's what the report came out about. That was the, the, the education the teacher. I think that's one of the, that was, was central. Was that the uh, was that the independent prison monitoring board? Well, yeah, that was another thing. That was a report that came out, and of course, you've also that was part of the, the that was because that's a perpetual complaint for years going back, saying that there's not an, enough training and retraining of people to prepare them for a release eventually. That 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 report seems to be consistent over the years. Yes, um, it's basically, there is, there's obviously two sections within the prison. There's the, uh, the old guard who, um, I, I believe, well, one of the prisoners found a quote from Len Norman where he said, we don't just send prisoners to prison for revenge, right. which um, caused a great deal of amusement because obviously you don't send people to prison for revenge, and right. revenge is not something that the state should be seeking. Um, the other part of what Ben Norman says was that we sent them there to rehabilitate them and make them valued members of the community of which they are a part of and which yeah. they will be returned to. Um, obviously, the problem in Jersey is that there's not a lot of crime. Um, and obviously, to make a prison run effectively, you do need a sort of minimum number of prisoners. Uh, and speaking to the staff here, the prison numbers have been maintained between 130 and 170 for the last 20 years. In fact, it would appear that the, the keeping the numbers of people in prison is more important than actually um, serving justice in Jersey. Um, well, they've got the old treadmill out of the old, old prison down at the museum. Now, they, they could resort to putting prisoners back on the treadmill because it was a totally pointless activity. At least today they could make it generate electricity, I suppose. But those sort of time-consuming activities without an end product are no use to prisoners, and I don't think they're much use to anybody. Do they, do they have activities like that which produce nothing? Uh, no. I mean, you've got there's, there's three main areas of work. There's the compound a lot of the food that's grown in the compound in the prison is then used in the prison kitchens to feed the prisoners right. there's the workshop where they um, do carpentry and, and other trades and you know they run painting and decorating courses and, right. and then the, the there's obviously the kitchen or there was the kitchen till it burned down and we're now on a temporary kitchen with half the number of staff is that still not being repaired the kitchen they haven't uh, they haven't even started repairing the kitchen we've got a temporary kitchen which right. is why we're on half numbers. But the, the actual old kitchen, and they haven't even started clearing out. Do they keep you informed? I mean, you obviously the word gets around in a prison. It's a little closed community, but officially you do get reports on the state of the kitchen? Well, only because I work in the kitchen. All right, OK. So, Cut uh, out the middleman, that's good. Um, where are we going next? It's... Uh, yeah, so, so uh, there's, not, there's not enough jobs, though, to go around the number of prisoners is the main problem. 
I mean, for example, not to do with the prison at all, but at Highlands recently, they, they tried to close down a course because there weren't enough students on it, but they had to put it back on again because they said it wasn't economic to run it for a small number of students. Now, prisons are, inevitably, prisons are going to find that they haven't got enough uh, prisoners to want to pursue particular subjects at a particular time. That's inevitable, isn't it? A small prison, like it won't probably happen in somewhere like Dartmoor, presumably they got a lot of prisoners there. But a small prison like Jersey, that must inevitably happen. They must allow for that, mustn't they? Well, if, if you think that uh, the, number of, the number of prisoners in the Jersey prison is 150. Right. I think currently it's 155, but as I say, it's varies between 130 and 170 without fail for the last 20 years. Right. That's basically the size of one wing in an English prison. Right. Um, so you're, what, you're, what you are getting is obviously you're getting a lot more administration. For one, one wing in, in England would have four prison officers, one uh, and one officer to over and one senior officer to oversee the prison officers. Mm. What you've got to remember is that the prison officers are, are, are under a great deal more surveillance than the prisoners. Mm. They're more they're more suspects of of doing bad things than the prisoners. Um, there are drugs in the Jersey prison, and obviously they do come in through the prison officers. And we've lost two this year, um, and, and I'm sure that those others who are they're not throwing them over the wall in socks anymore. Then uh, uh, sorry. They're not throwing drugs over the wall in somebody's sock anymore, which used to be a, a favourite in some prisons, according to the uh, the films on the telly, anyway. Um, I have heard the stories that they used to do it, but I think since they've moved the wings or they've they've built something in the place where they used to throw the things over, it doesn't happen yeah. so much. But it's not really that's not really my area of expertise. <laughs> I'm not really interested in that sort of information. So um, I would tend to get left out of any any such there was also a case that came up recently because they had an under a child being uh, detained. Now this is an old issue. This has come up before. A child up there who was being detained in, in what is an adult prison, and obviously there was there weren't facilities for the child, and she shouldn't have been there. Anyway. I think it was a girl it was underage, shouldn't have been there anyway. She shouldn't. And, but this is again, it's the thing that the prison is too small to have proper facilities. Have you heard about that case, or is that blown away? I did. Um, I did meet. I did meet the fifteen-year-old boy. Right. Um, he was obviously, on a, he was kept separate to everybody else. He was with two prisoners' officers at all times, so he wasn't uh, on his own. And occasionally oh, it was a boy, I thought it was a girl. He was brought into the kitchen just to make a sandwich or... Right. Just to, because obviously he's, he's on his own, other than those two prison officers. Right. Um, from what I understood, he did have problems interacting with other people. Right. He was very nervous around other people. I think he had Tourette's syndrome. Right. Didn't make it easy for him, so they tried their best with him. Did they? Do you, I mean, obviously, these are real problems that will occur, aren't they? Now, obviously, if you have got one only child prisoner, well, how are you supposed to maintain security for them 24 hours a day, seven days a week? It's a problem, isn't it? It is. Um, well, as I say, the, the one solution would be, at the moment, there's over 30 prisoners who are not from Jersey, will not be allowed to stay in Jersey once they're released and are wanting to get sent back to England. Right. Um, if, you, if you took those out, that would kick the numbers down below the 130, at which point staff can be reassigned from wing staff to do other things. So the option is, is there to, to make the staff available. Staffing is a problem. Nobody wants... The, the, it's, it's a terrible job being a prison officer. Is when uh, Ian Lamarckon... When Ian Lamarckon was head of uh, Home Affairs years ago, he said one of the problems was if you reduced the size of the prison population, you'd have to close down wings of the prison. In other words, you wouldn't need the staff, but you have to close down a whole wing. You couldn't just fritter away a few staff because there wouldn't be enough to run it. So that was the way the ultimate. So you, you couldn't uh, anticipate as if there was a sudden, all of a sudden, a crime spree or whatever, something happened to increase the problem. You wouldn't, you'd have to recruit staff, which takes time. You couldn't run the place. So you can see the sort of logistical problem, can you? Well, the, the, the logistical problem is solved if you process people's requests for transfers to the United Kingdom in a reasonable right. time. We've just had one go through, which was took 14 months to process. Really? And as I say, there's over 30 waiting to go. Um, 
Well, at that time, when the mark on was there... Down ...and you could get rid of them, and then there was always the release valve... Right. ...of let's ship some prisoners off to, to England. Right. Um, and at the end of the day, the courts can give the sentences that the courts choose to. They don't have to give custodial sentences for... No. A, no, this, this is another... In a lot this, of cases, I would suggest that a custodial sentence was not correct. No. Um, modern thinking is that you should only send someone to prison if they present a danger to the public. And to be quite honest with you, the vast majority of prisoners in the Jersey prison, certainly the ones who are not on the vulnerable person's wing, are probably not a real gen a genuine danger to the public. Right. They could quite happily be given non-custodial alternatives. Or if they're the, the drug importers, then they could be shipped back to England. Um, I mean, does the Jersey taxpayer really want to pay 70000 or £100,000 a year to keep someone who well, is not actually part of our community? One of the problems back in Lamarckon's day, I haven't been to a scrutiny meeting because it's all been in lockdown, I haven't been to a scrutiny meeting for ages, but the, the problem was in Lamarckon's day, which is a few years ago, well, if if they repatriated police, people to another territory, somewhere else, there wasn't always a reciprocal arrangement in place for the sentence. In other words, if they went to England, they might have different rules in England on parole. And the, the Jersey rules on parole were quite strict. And you'd have somebody in sent to a, an English prison. Other prisoners would be getting parole, but the Jersey prisoner wouldn't. So it was a bit difficult sometimes, as I understood it, that they, they would not get fair treatment or they could get if they were on parole if they were sentenced by a jersey court and the english system tried to give them parole they couldn't necessarily they couldn't necessarily take it so they the, the english system might decide well this person's fit to be released but the jersey system might not agree i don't know if that's changed but that was a situation a few years ago there is a there's a law in england called the um, transfer of prisoners restricted channel islands and the isle of man right uh, there's two ways you can transfer from jersey to england one is on the basis that your sentence will then be applied to English terms. Right. Or you can be transferred restricted, which means your sentence is on Jersey terms. Right. Now, Jersey terms are that you serve two-thirds of your sentence. So if you get a three-year sentence, you serve two years. English terms are if you get a, a three-year sentence, you serve 18 months. Right. And uh, if you, and, and, and under the English system, if you get a sentence under four years, you actually don't go to prison. You are on tag. So you go really? and stay in your own home on tag because there's a, they, they don't want to be, they, they don't have these uh, hundreds of millions of pounds to waste, like uh, Jersey does, on keeping people who don't need to be in prison in prison just to... Um, Is it still the case that the prisoner, does the prisoner have to agree to being moved back to England or wherever they came from? Yes, you, the prisoner has to apply. The prisoner has right. to apply and right. you have to have... Well, you have to have relatives in the area, so you have to have three relatives. Well, that's the, that's the scenario, isn't it? Support your transfer. Um, and presumably and they will get... That they will help you find employment and accommodation. Right. Your it's, it's about getting you... The prison is really about helping the prisoner. It's um, right. trying to get you back into being part of the community. Right. Now, because that's obviously an, an aspect of it. If you're going to go back and just resume the lifestyle you had before in England, if it was a crooked way, if you had uh, problems in England, no no suitable f friendships or family, then obviously you'd be straight back into trouble again, wouldn't you? So a lot of so-called habitual criminals, virtually, they can't escape from it, even when they're outside prison, can they? Well, I, I think in England you get a lot more post-custody support. So you, yeah. mean, you may get released halfway through your sentence, but the rest of your sentence you're then in constant contact with probation whereas in jersey they kick you out the door and that's your out the door and good luck to you get on with it uh, there is no real there is no real transition phase um for example in england once you're down to the last three years of your sentence to serve you then go to an open prison in the last two years you, you get to go to town once a week and then in the last 18 months you get to go home one weekend a month mm -hmm. so you, you you gradually put back into normal society rather than just being shoved through the gate and told to get on with it without any assistance at all. Um, I mean, if prisoners are locked away, their scope to save money, because obviously if you work in the kitchen, you get a small wage for working in the kitchen. But if you have no money, if you have no resources for you when you come out of jail, you have to try and save some money, presumably, in jail, do you? Unless you've got a, some generous uncle who's going to give you some money. So wh how, what sort of money are people like? How much in a year is a prisoner likely to save? Is it, is it 
possible to calculate how much they could save in a year? In the kitchen, which is the best paid job in the prison. Right. Um, you earn up to £31.50 a week. Right. Um, so, and on average, every week I will spend £80 on phone, canteen. How many pounds? 80? 80. 80. Eight zero or one eight? Uh, eight zero. Eight zero, really? Yeah, yeah. Extraordinary. So, um, <coughs> if you're if you're one of the people who works for seventeen pounds a week, yeah. um, chances are you're not likely to save very much, or you're going to have uh, you're going to not be able to con keep in contact with your family, and uh, you're not going to be able to treat yourself to a bar of chocolate a day or something. Right. You can do all those things, can you? You can you, yeah, you, yeah. you can you can make your you can double in size then if you eat chocolate every day. Some people, uh, particularly some of the uh, some of the drug addicts, particularly do gain an awful lot of weight. Do they? I mean, I, I don't want to pry, and maybe they shouldn't tell the public. But how can you have eighty pounds to spend? Where does it go? You've got you've got resources to well, draw your, on. Your family you? can uh, you, 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 as much money. Your family can give you as much money as you as you wish to have. Really. There is, I mean, there is a limit to how much money you can physically spend. Right. But there's a maximum of £60 to spend on canteen. Um, but then... Um, is that I supervised? I a creative writing course, and that cost me £450, which my family right. paid for me. I see, but it's paid externally. You don't have £400 in your back pocket and you give it up to the prison. It doesn't work quite like that. No, no, it goes into an account which the prison administers. Right. And then you tell the prison, or you ask the prison if you can spend it on this, this, and this. Are you doing creative writing, or have you? Uh, yes, yes. No, I've had, um, I've had some, I've had some published, some children's stories published. It's been. Have you really? Yeah, um, I've got one with the one that's turned into an audio book for the Blind Children's Society, or so. One of my friends has done illustrations to go with the story. So. I've been writing a book for fifty years. I bet perhaps I get her to go to prison that day and finish it <laughs> off. <laughs> well, there's. Uh, it, 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 if you wanted me to describe the prison experience, it's 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 the closest I could imagine. Is it is like living in a monastery, really? Um, well, I've never lived in a monastery, but I can imagine. But you've got TV, you've got facilities for other things. I mean, you're locked up. That's the punishment, isn't it? That's why we have to keep reminding people. To prison. You're not, we don't come to prison to be punished. No. The punishment is being sent to prison, and once you're here. Um, well, you, you're, you're at 7.30 every night, they lock, they lock the door and they don't unlock it till 7.30 in the morning. So, That's right. um, no, I mean, it, it's a... I mean, obviously a lot of people live that life on the outside, don't they? A lot of people live solitude. You know, they're not able to go out, they've got various disabilities. There are it, a number of people who've had to be dragged out of the prison. Are there? Um, because they were homeless on the outside and they didn't want to go and... Uh, you know, you, you, especially now when the price of everything's going up, what, what, what we don't have to do is worry. Right. We don't have to worry about where the food's coming from or the electricity right. or how we're going to pay any bills. That's all done for you. All, all of that is taken away from you. Right. Um, some people, whether that's a blessing or a curse, I, I'll leave uh, uh, individual people to. Right. But for some people, it's definitely a blessing. I mean, there was quite a movement in America, especially, I think. They used to say that, because their prison payment for work there was virtually nil, very low, and they used to describe it as a sort of modern slavery, because you had no choice, you are in prison, you had to work for nothing, and it meant that you couldn't save anything for your release, if you were ever going to be released. Now, that, does that argument, is that ever discussed by prisoners, that they, they're fearful of being released because they won't be able to survive, they won't have any money to go out with? United Kingdom, isn't it? Because I mean, even in Jersey, you can, you can. Uh, they're opening up a, a branch of income support at the prison. Right. Which is not going to be just for the prisoners. It's also going to be for the um, Western parishioners. Um, but obviously, that that, is, that will be a great assistance to the prisoners when they get released. And currently, when you know you're going to be released, you can put your application into income support before you leave. Really. Um, do you get visits? Does income support staff, do any income support staff come out to talk to you? Do they discuss these things or it all has to be done by... You have to put your name down. They haven't come to speak to me. Right. Um, but 
you can put your name down and they'll come up once every once every two months I think they do a what they call a marketplace where right. income support and other people come up to you when we last spoke there was talk because obviously now we're in an election period now it's all uh, all the whistles are blowing now because it started the the election what finally happened at the prison what was what was the right of prisoners to vote uh, if you've got less than four years left to serve then you have the right to vote right if you have less than two years left to serve then you can stand for election really yes I, I don't see. know why, but it seems, all seems very arbitrary, but those are the rules. Now, are prisoners making use of the facility? Are they... Uh, and there's nobody standing, because there's nobody that I've noticed got their address at Lemoy Prison. But uh, are people wanting to vote? Will people voting? Will they be voting? Well, I, 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 I will. I'll be voting. There right. are, I think there's only three people who are eligible in, on, on my particular wing. Right. Because most of them, as I say, you have to you have to have been in Jersey, obviously for two years bef before you're entitled to vote. So right. the majority, the vast majority of the prisoners on my wing are all English people who haven't been here for two years. Right. So they wouldn't be entitled to vote anyway. No. But what ad what address, like somebody or yourself, where do they decide is your constituency? How do they decide uh, that? Bernard. They all get the the Moy vote, do they? Then we all get the same. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, if you had, obviously, it's not exactly going to swell anybody's vote, is it? Only well, the, the, only, the only, only thing is, if you were registered in another electoral district, right? Because they wipe the register the year that the election is, right? And then, if you'd registered to vote in another district before you came into prison, right? Then you would, um, you'd be entitled to vote in that district, right? Otherwise, you can register to vote in St Bernard's. Right. Being resident of the Moy. Well, I presume they won't get many candidates coming to speak to you, will they? I suppose that was uh, be stretching a bit too far, wouldn't it? Um, I do. I do have the phone number for one candidate who I can phone up. Have you? Um, but uh, we're not expecting. It's <laughs> sort of limited value. As I, as I, I think the majority of the local prisoners are obviously in for sexual offences. Right. Um, You're not. You're not allowed. You don't. You're not allowed to speak to them, or you just don't meet during. Is that it? You just don't meet them during the course of your day, or you? Oh no, we are actually physically. You're physically barred. You can't. Allowed to be in the same. Right. Ah. Because obviously, in England, they would tend to be assaulted. Right. Now, is that a specific sexual offenders wing, or is it just a wing where they put people with different categories of uh, punishment? Of is, it's not people just sexual offenders. People who have turned Queen's evidence, if you were right, I see. in court against other people. Oh, right. There'll be people who've committed child sexual offences. There'll be right. people who've committed rape. Right. There'll be people who've assaulted women. There will be people who owe other people money for drugs. Right. Um, or there'll be people who um, are vulnerable. Are, right. Um, there are people on there who are, due to their mental condition, need, are vulnerable and right. aren't fit to mix in, mm. or that they they can't they, they get easily offended or they get teased a lot, um, and for their own protection they get put onto that wing as well. Whilst you've been there, I don't know how long you've been there now, but uh, have you observed people having mental stress to a degree which is the dangerous mental stress? Um, there, well, well, obviously, if you've read the Independent Prison Monitoring Board, there was an awful lot of self-harming going on. Right. Um, oh, uh, I have... Oh, there we go. Some, uh, the, the, somebody's obviously scored in the football because they're banging the door. All right. Um, um, mental stress. For, for, I think the way it is, when you first come into prison for the first three months, you're on a different wing and you have limited, right. you don't have as many um, uh, amenities as you do once you've done your three months and had your drugs test and passed all of that and then they move you on to the wing right. that I'm on now. Uh, so I think that is, uh, that, is a lot, that is a lot more stressful on that wing than it is um, 
once you get to the old man thing, as it were. Right. You talk about old men, I'm an old man, but they, there were some attempts at making disabled facilities available. How many, what have they got in the way of facilities for disabled people, though? Well, we do have one disabled prisoner who... Obviously, we've just come off COVID, so when, he, when they were putting the COVID restrictions in place, they basically just locked him in his cell right. um, for three months. Um, and he got so bad that he lost the ability to walk. And, right. um, he's basically had to gradually build up his strength again. So really? He's, he's actually walking and running. Well, not running, but he's, he's walking quite, I mean, quite a good distance. People generally think in terms of disability meaning, meaning mobility. In other words, they see the magic wheelchair sign. But there's all sorts of disabilities like deafness, blindness, all sorts of things. Well, that, we have got, obviously got one prisoner with multiple sclerosis at the moment. Right, right. Um, and people might have seen him. Uh, the ridiculousness of him in his wheelchair being handcuffed to a... Right, right. Uh, they moved him from the court to the van. Right. Um, yes. Uh, so, so, so he is being catered for here. There is the old, uh, there is the old man, and there was previously someone who'd had an operation on their feet. And, right. Um, you uh, incidentally attended uh, your uh, family bereavement the other way. You went to a funeral, didn't you? I did. Yeah. What? Um, how did they organise that? How, how, I mean, obviously they presumably escort you. Are you allowed to go? That's the first thing. Well, that, that's, at the moment that's subject to a human rights. Ongoing. I haven't had the judgment from a oh, really? right hearing on that. So basically, they forced me to be handcuffed at my right. father's funeral. Um, uh, well, that, that, um, no, that, that's, it's best not to talk. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> that, no, if it's an ongoing case, I didn't realise there was a case involved. It's, uh, you can see the difficulties for the the prison and for the prisoner, can't you? Because obviously, well, it's, a, it's a situation of distress to start with. Prisoner in the morning and told me to be back at six o'clock right. and told me you're not allowed to drink alcohol you're not allowed to take drugs we will test you when you come back right. um, I, as far as I'm concerned I'm not a danger to the public as far as they're concerned I'm not right. a danger to the public um, and it, it, I'm not being let out just for my own amusement I'm being let out for uh, a very specific reason um, and all the case law supports that I should have not had to go in handcuffs at the very least I shouldn't have had to have been restrained um but we'll see what um, Jersey does. We, Jersey team seems forget that human the, rights are universal. Well, by the, one, the wonders of television and similar things, we hear all these uh, extraordinary stories of prisons at one end, where it's virtually freedom, come and go as you wish, sort of, or not being sent to prison at all, being non-custodial sentences. And then across the side of the other side of the Atlantic, you have people locked away for 100 years and things like that. So... Somewhere in between, there has to be a happy medium, does there, where the um, prisoners shouldn't be prisoners at all? Is that your... What's your view? Has it changed by being locked up? Well, what, 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 is, um, what is the purpose of sending someone to prison? What is the I mean, other than, other than to actually protect the public from a dangerous person, right. of which... There's probably not a great deal. There's probably isn't that many people who are actually a danger to the public. No. Um, of course, it's the it's the cases where somebody's sent away who's violent comes out and is even more violent. I mean, those are the cases which uh, sort of make the, it's inevitable that the people are going to be treated harshly, aren't they? So, but those will happen anyway. Those cases will happen. I mean, that, there was a, I don't know if you remember recently there was a, someone who walked out of an open prison. And a few days later, they found him in Scarborough on the seaside. Right. Um, he was no danger to her. So the, the rule is: Are you likely to abscond? Right. And if you are likely to abscond, would that would you would you then be a danger to the public? So you, they've got to show that both of those things: that you are likely to abscond and that you are likely to be a danger to the public. Um, otherwise, they're breaching your human rights. We'd um, better stop. I'm conscious of that because uh, this is fascinating stuff. But hopefully, rules being what they are, I hope they will allow us to speak again if there are any developments in your case. At the moment, you've got how much longer to do? What's your release date as things stand? Uh, 17th December 2025. Okay. Okay, Dale. So, we'll speak before that, that's for sure. I'm sure we will, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I shall wish you good night. I don't know what time they tuck you in. What time do you get tucked in tonight? Oh, well, the 
doors locked at half past seven. And it's... that goes off at eleven o'clock. Okay, does it? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to make my cocoa now. Okay. Good night. Good luck. I'll speak to you soon. Bye Cheers. Bye.